Alright, just gonna do a video debunking this booklet, uh, defending oneness theology. It's called, sorry, my cat is messing around in the background. Uh, it's called, what's it called? The Essentials of Oneness Theology by uh, David K. Bernard. And this is a booklet I heard about while watching a stream by Brian Dillinger and JT Does exposing James White's ridiculous book uh, defending the pagan trinity. And I, he mentioned this, this uh, booklet pretty much defining what oneness theology is. So I downloaded a PDF copy of it and read through it and there's several points I want to go through and debunk. Because he says that God is one, which is true, but he says that in the sense that there's no separation or distinction, which there is. And I'm going to show you that and debunk some of the arguments he uses. And you're going to see in this booklet that he, teach, he teaches true modalism. Because people will accuse me and, and Brian and JT does, they'll accuse us of teaching modalism because we preach the biblical Godhead. But what he teaches in this booklet, this is what true modalism is, not what we, not what we preach. So let's get right into it. In page 8, he says, The oneness doctrine can be presented scrutiny, I don't know how you say it, so, so, yeah, not good at reading, in two positions, or propositions. There is one indivisible God with no distinction of persons. Now, this is true to an extent. There is one God, but there is distinction in the Godhead. Not three persons, as the Trinitarians claim, but there is distinction in the Godhead. No doubt about that. Because where he goes wrong is he's defending one God in the sense that there's no separation, which there is. That's where he goes wrong. I have written in my notes that this is probably true. There are not three persons, as the Trinitarians claim, but there is still distinction and separation with three members of the Godhead. Best example of this is in... The baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, Mark chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, and Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. Jesus, the Son of God, is on earth, and he's getting baptized, and when that happens, the Father, the, the heavens open up, and the Father is basically praising the Son, talking about the Son, and the Holy Ghost comes down, descending like a dove. So we see this through the three parts of the Godhead, they're separate, and they're interacting with each other. The Father is interacting with the Son. Now, if his claim is true, there's no distinction, this is not possible. Because he's saying there's no distinction of persons. Well, if this is true, then how is the Father in heaven talking to Jesus on earth? You know, as seen in Matthew 3, Mark 1, and Luke 3. It's not possible. There is separation and distinction in the Godhead. Uh, on page 8, he also says... Simply stated, God is absolutely ind indivisibly one. There is no essential distinctions or divisions in his eternal nature. Now again, this is partly true, that he is one being, but yes, there is distinction and separation. You know, a good example of this I've written in my notes is Jesus, I mean, uh, basically Jesus being at the right hand of God the Father. We see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 32 to 33, and Acts chapter 7, verse 55 to 56. He talks about how Jesus is, is at the right hand of God. So again, God is one being, but there is separation. You know, Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father, proving separation. If his claim was true, then that's not possible. These verses would not be possible. Um, next page, page 11, he says, The only passage used, uh, that uses the word tr or person in relation to God is Hebrews 1.3, which says the Son is the image of God's own person, literally substance, not a separate person or substance. Now, he, I've written in my note, I've written in my notes, he is right. God is only one person. Here, here's how God is. God has a, has a body. Uh, Colossians 2, 9 and John chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. God has a body. God has a spirit. See Genesis 6, 3, uh, 2 Samuel 23, 2, 1 Kings 18, 12, and Numbers 11, 9, 29. God has a spirit. God has a soul. See Psalms 11, 5, Leviticus 26, verse 11, and Leviticus 26, verse 30. God has a body, soul, and spirit. Now, Body, soul, and spirit can separate. Okay, that's where you get First John five seven. These three are one, but they can still separate. Uh, I've written my notes. Body, soul, and spirit can separate. And I quote Matthew three sixteen seventeen and Acts seven fifty five fifty six. There is separation, and also we're made in the image of God. I have in my notes. Uh, we have a body, soul, and spirit. Our body, soul, and spirit can separate too. When we die, our body is not in earth, but our soul and spirit is in heaven. We can separate too. Now the difference between our us and God is that obviously God is divine we're not so basically our body soul and spirit cannot separate and we can't like separate in the sense that like we can't be alive equally separate but when God when he when him when his body soul and spirit can separate uh, they can manage on their own basically which is if my soul and spirit were to depart from my body my body would just drop down dead basically I cannot live without my soul and my spirit which is for God he doesn't need to, the soul and spirit to live they can separate and still manage on their own. 
That's you know, that's the difference. But again, God is one being, and there is separation. You know, so his argument is is not it's not true. It's it's uh, false. And he says in page 14, the Holy Spirit is literally the spirit that was in Christ. Now this proves the biblical Godhead, because God the Father and the Holy Ghost were in Jesus Christ when he was on earth. Obviously, my, my cat's messing around in the background. Um, I've written in my notes, he's arguing this with the standpoint that there is no distinction or separation in the Godhead. Now there is, you know, 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear a record in heaven, these three are one. Okay? Three and one. And then... I have in my notes as well, the Father and the Holy Ghost are in Jesus as the soul and the spirit. So that's why the, the Father and the Holy Ghost are in Jesus Christ. They're in his, him a, in, as the soul and the spirit. Uh, and But there's still a distinction. I, I, um, good example for distinction is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23 to 24. Christ brings the kingdom up to God the Father. I mean, it, and also in my notes, this would not be possible if there's no separation in the Godhead. You know? You know, 100%. If there's no separation or distinction, why is Christ bringing the kingdom up to the Father? Because in his mind, and I'm going to show you in this next page, he literally says like that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are just three purposes or modes of God. I'm going to show you that right now. Page 15, he says, The terms can also be understood as God... Uh, God's revelation to man, the Father refers to God in family relationship to man, the Son refers to God incarnate, and the Spirit refers to, to God in activity. Now this is true modalism. What I say is not modalism. What I say about the Godhead is not modalism. This is what true modalism is. Saying that God, basically the Father, and, the, and basically the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are not uh, distinct. He's saying that they're just simply three different purposes or modes of God. And I have written in my notes, this is what true modalism is. What I say is not modalism. This is what modalism is. He's implying that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are just three modes or purposes of God. This is false. Uh, Jesus, and some, here's some proof on that. Jesus says the Father is greater than him in John 14, 28. In uh, John uh, 4, 34 and John 6, 38, Jesus said he was doing the will of the Father and the Father sent him. So again, how is this possible if, if this claim is true? And, and uh, in Acts 2, 32 and Acts 3, 26 and Acts 5, 30, the Bible says that God raised Jesus up. So again, if this is, you know, if his claim is true, how is this possible? Because there is separation and distinction in the Godhead. That's how it works. So I wanted to do that just debunking this guy's pamphlet, trying to defend oneness. And again, just try to make it clear, I'm not oneness, okay? People say, oh, you're oneness, you're modalist. I get these comments from these people who just listen to every little video I put out and just have to just pick, up a, pick apart every any, any little thing I say. They'll just say, oh, you're oneness. You know, no, I'm not. Uh, there is separation in the Godhead. I, like what he said, that the Father is just a God in family relationship, the Son is the God incarnate, and the Spirit refers to God in activity. That's what true modalism is. Because he's saying that God is just three different modes, essentially. So, yeah, I'm not oneness, and this guy's pamphlet is just full of errors. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I've showed you so much scripture debunking this guy's pamphlet. So I just wanted to do a video debunking that, and the, the biblical Godhead, again, is God has a body, Jesus Christ, God has a soul, God the Father, and God has a spirit, the Holy Spirit. These three are one, 1 John 5, 7. And again, they can be separate, you know, like Jesus being at the right hand of the Father, or Jesus bringing the kingdom up to the Father. There is separation. So don't be deceived by oneness, and don't be deceived by Trinitarianism. Both of them are equally false. Both of them are not biblical. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.